and gentlemen, you've just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, guys. It's red hot and ready. Today, it's all about Greek style, horatiki salad, souvlaki, flaming cheese puffs. Man, we got it all going on. We even got a medallion. And I'm going to be teaching John a thing or two in the backyard when we're discovering the taste of Greece and Greek culture. So come on back, kids. We're going to be channeling Bruno Gerussi's spirit. Okay guys, here we are, we're back in the kitchen. I gotta tell you how excited I am today, okay? We're doing this Greek episode. We managed to track down a special guest who's gonna teach us a whole lot about Greek cooking, okay? This is a very familiar character. I can't tell you who it is right now, but you'll recognize him immediately. He's a very famous star of the screen, the television, the radio, the snake bit, the backyard, the jerk bit, the lamp bit, and the... Okay, anyway, I'm not gonna tell you any more about that. You're gonna have to just hold on to your and just wait, okay? Let's get to it. This is fennel, okay? This is one of the main ingredients in ouzo, right? We don't have any ouzo here because our uh, technical staff drank it up before breakfast this morning. That's why they're on this, God, just moving around, okay, just gonna get another shot here. Ooh, man, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? No. Okay, it's fennel a la grec, okay? In French, what that means is just how the Greeks would cook it, right? We're gonna blanch this down, actually we're gonna stew it very slowly, okay? Poaching our fennel and we're gonna put all the ingredients in that are very indigenous to the, uh, to the Greek mountainside. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna cut, uh, cut the knot out of this baby here, right? This part of the fennel is very, very tough. And if you're gonna put this on the grill, we'd leave this in because it would hold all the little parts of the fennel that stick up together. But since we're not doing that, I'm just gonna slice it straight down like this into like baby finger-sized pieces, right? And we all love baby fingers, don't we? Okay, the Greek ingredients that we have going in here as well, I'll show you right now, okay? We got coriander seed, okay? This is actually the seed of the cilantro leaf, okay? We use that in a lot of our recipes here as well, okay? We got some black pepper, actually mixed pepper, we got black pepper, we got white pepper, we got red pepper. It's all basically the same beast, except it's cured or dried to uh, varying degrees. Okay, we got a bay leaf, we got a sprig of thyme, got about five cloves of garlic, just gonna leave them whole, right? Throw your onions in. Got a little bit of vinegar. It's about a quarter of a cup of white vinegar. That's cool. And we got a cup of white wine. Gonna crank the heat up on this puppy. It's got a little bit of water here. And to that, we're gonna add some coarse salt. We'll say about three quarters of a tablespoon. Just stir this up. Okay, so we're just gonna let this cook down a little bit. But when we come back, it's a cucumber, a sheep, a bottle of ouzo, and a whole lot of magic. Greece, the land of ouzo. One of those places that everyone has to visit at least once in their lifetime. One of the best things about Greece is the food. Rich in flavor and celebration. We have Joseph from Opa Greek Taverna here to talk to you about Greek cuisine. It's all about the meat. Okay, uh, we're gonna now make a dish that is uh, in sound, at least reminiscent of the morning after an evening with a Polynesian hooker, okay? It's called horatiki. Okay, you've probably all eaten it before, but you don't know the girl it's all about, do you? <gasps> the hell does that mean? It's not something I'd like to get into. I'm gonna chop up a couple of vegetables here. This is a green onion. Really, really? Don't argue with me. <laughs> you have a knife, okay. This is a green pepper, I'm sorry. It's been a long day. <laughs> okay, this is going straight in here. Okay, we got a red pepper. Not at all like a red onion. And we'll do the same thing here. Doesn't have to be pretty, right? Just sort of in bite-sized pieces. Straight in. Okay, let's add some onion to this, okay? Red onion, which is not a red pepper. Check this out, Dean. 
just cut it in half, peel the skin right off. If you can't get the skin, just take the first layer of the onion. Come on, these things don't cost that much, do they? And we'll chop this puppy up. Straight down that way. Into the bowl. Now we got some feta cheese. Just crumple that straight in. This is about a cup. Oh, those onions are strong, man. Come to think of it, I just left out one ingredient from our uh, fennel allegrec, and that's lemon juice. That's going to add a nice little bite to that, along with the white wine. It's okay. If you forget something, add it a little bit later, right? Ooh. Those onions, man. Okay. We got some thyme here. This is about a tablespoon of thyme. Dried thyme. Fresh thyme is better. Dried thyme is just fine, okay? We got some mint. This is about two tablespoons of fresh mint. Very typical, very, very typical Greek spice, as is the dill, which is going straight in. We got some Kalamata olives, straight in. Got a quarter cup of lemon juice, that's going in as well. Take the pepper bat out. Put as much of this on as you want, man. I like a lot of pepper. And a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. There we go. Yeah, 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 I know, whore, atiki, virgins, okay. Going straight to hell. Okay, the next thing we're gonna make is souvlaki. This is where the lamb comes in, okay? Actually, the lamb came in a little earlier, but this is what happened to it. Simple recipe. We got some natural yogurt, two cups. Toss that right in there. This is not low fat, 2% or anything like that. Pure natural yogurt, that's what you want. Anything else is a, well, it's, a, it's just a crab. We got some onions, half a cup or so diced. Got some cumin, mmm, smells great. That's about a, just a half a tablespoon, you know, two teaspoons. This is a tablespoon of oregano. Got some fresh mint here, again, one of the trademark flavors. And we got some paprika. Check that out, Dean. What does that look like? Paprika Very good. Straight in there. That's a tablespoon. Gonna give it a little turn. Okay. Okay, guys, we're gonna let this stand in here for at least two hours, right? The enzymes in the yogurt are gonna break down the muscle fibers of this meat and make it super tender. Not only tender, but it's gonna flavor it fantastically. And remember, when we come back, we have our famous star of screen, stage, radio, and television. Don't miss it, okay? We're here with Joseph from Opa Greek Taverna, and we're talking about Greek cuisine. Now, what are some of the most common ingredients used in Greek food? Uh, the most common is we use uh, a yogurt and we convert it to tzatziki. Uh -huh. Tzatziki, which is consists from uh, shredded uh, cucumber, English cucumber, which we always put it like uh, on the side uh, with the meat and the fish. Um, and so, what are some of the common flavors found in Greek food? The most uh, flavor on it, like an example on moussaka, pasticcio, we use uh, cinnamon stick to flavor the meat to give them the essence of the uh, cinnamon. Uh -huh. And uh, lots of herb and uh, the most important herb we use on the Greek cuisine is the dill, fresh mint and uh, rosemary. What are we making today? Uh, I like to make uh, stuffed halibut and um, uh, first we have to make uh, the stuffing. Uh, you put uh, unsalted butter, about one tablespoon, okay. and you put about half cup uh, green onion. Okay. And couple tablespoon sun-dried tomato. Mm -hmm. And about one cup cut uh, spinach, fresh spinach, we uh, put it here. Okay, mm, that looks like it's gonna be great. And we cook it a little bit. And so how much do you want to cook this? Do you want it to just Just till it wilted, you know. And we have to chop some uh, fresh dill to give it the flavor. So is dill used a lot in um, Greek It's a lot of dill we use in the house. It smells great. Here we add, we put the dill, and okay. we add a quarter of cup the calocaviera cheese. Now is this cheese really strong? It is strong. Uh -huh. It's very strong taste on uh, the flavor of, you, you find, the, you taste the cheap uh, milk on it. It's sheep's cheese. The feta cheese is made from goat. Okay. We shall make now the salsa here. Okay. We put it a little bit high the heat and we reduce it. And we put the feta, about a quarter cup. Okay. Now is that feta local? That's what we uh, imported from uh, Greece. Uh, and so why do you import it from Greece? The taste, and the taste, the quality, you know. Okay. And we put the dill mm. on the top, and this is, will be the sauce. 
And so are we just going to simmer this? Yes. Now we come to the halibut. Uh huh. You take the halibut, you cut it a split in the middle. Okay. And don't cut it right on, just leave it like a pocket okay. inside, you know, that's uh, in it. And you take the stuffing. And you fill it inside. Oh, that looks great. As much as it can take. Okay. And you put a little bit butter on the top. Salt and pepper, you sprinkle on it, and okay. you put it on the oven mm -hmm. for 10 minutes. Oh, that looks great. That's how it comes, you know. I take the halibut, and I put it like that. And this is the sauce. Stir it a little bit, and uh, as you smell the aroma of the mm. dill and the feta cheese. Yeah, that smells and great. And you put it, you know. Oh, that looks great. I'm gonna try this out because it looks too good. Mmm, that's very good. I'm glad. Oh, tastes great. And stick with us because when we come back, we're gonna talk about the wonder and mystery of Greek food. From Hamburg to Yorburg, it's all about the meat here on Red Hot Ready. We're back with Joseph from Opa Greek Taverna and we're talking about the wonder and mystery of Greek food. Now when someone goes into a Greek restaurant, how do they decipher the menu? They look on the menu, we have uh, the mazada, it can be cold and hot. You can put a little bit on each plate and when they bring them on the plate, you know, you take bite from this and bite from that. Uh -huh. And after the main course, it come, you know, uh, after the mazada. So the mazada uh, is like a, an appetizer? That's correct. Okay. And uh, when you come to the main course, we have uh, like uh, lots of big meal, they call it, you know, like uh, take example, uh, the kleftiko, which is made from puff pastry and the lamb, fresh lamb inside, mm. is very good, uh, like a main course, you know, after mm. the mazada. And when you finish, you know, as uh, usual, we have uh, the baklava, it's very <laughs> famous in Greece, and uh, uh, we have kata'afi, which is made from uh, kata'afi, like uh, a dough, and we put a nice custard on the top, and whipping cream and pistachio. Mm, that sounds great. And what's the cultural significance of food in Greece? The food is love on it, and comfort, and friendship fun, enjoyment, and a good drink. And uh, <laughs> we talk about uh, the good drink. If, uh, like you order the mazada, you know, you can drink uh, ouzo with it. Mm -hmm. And when you drink it, you, uh, uh, like it's semi-sweet, you know, uh, it's very nice. Guys, next time you venture out to a Greek restaurant, be adventurous, be daring, and don't be afraid to try something that you haven't tried before. Experience the amazing flavors of Greece. Opa! Opa. <laughs> Yes, it is true. I am back. Zoro the Greek. Hoppa! Now, I shall get rid of this mediocre accent. Okay, guys, we're back. We're making up our sandwiches, okay? We're getting closer and closer and closer. Opa, down here. Okay, we're slicing up our eggplant for our moussaka. Okay, gonna slice it in half, three quarter inch kind of size, right? Four slices is enough. We don't have too many people coming over. Let's grease these babies up, okay? We also got some red pepper, we got some red onion, and tomato. These are all some of the main ingredients in moussaka. Although this is vegetarian moussaka. There is no lamb, okay, kids? Lamb is not good. <coughs> well, at least you've had a really rough night. Your wife's left you, and you know, that's all there is. <coughs> that was a mistake. Some black pepper here. Got a little salt. Because that's what we need. To the grill. OK, we're going to let these babies sit here for about probably 10, 15 minutes. That's how long it's going to take for them to cook. we got to get the eggplant nice and tender, huh? Good, good, good. Hey, you kids are staying out of my driveway. Now it is the uh, souvlaki. Hoppa! We've been marinating this for a couple of hours, and it's ready to go. We want to put this on some skewers. It's not going to take long to cook, okay? These have been soaked briefly, just to prevent them from burning on the grill. And we're going to thread this up. We're going to cook this to a nice and medium arara. Once we get this threaded up, uh, what the hell is with that accent, huh? I'm going to slide some of that yogurt off. 
You like that? That's a souvlaki. Opa! We put that straight on the grill, huh? And that's how we make a, a souvlaki. Opa! Okay? Now I'm going to do the national song of Zorro the Greek. This is the song of Zorro the Greek. I'm going to run right past this geek. So you still have not guessed the identity of Zorro the Greek. Aha! So you still have not guessed the identity of Zorro the Greek. Uh, you will never know the secret. A souvlaki is ready. Yeah, so our vegetables are ready as well. And we're gonna get these all chopped up for our moussaka vegetarian sandwich. This is gonna be fantastic, guys. Fantastic. So by chopping this up, what I mean to say is we're actually gonna run a knife through it. Unlike the chopping we did earlier with the hatchet on Cracker's arm. What we must do now is, hey, are you a kid to get out of the driveway, huh? Ooh, Zorro the Italian Greek. We're just gonna push out the corner of our board to cool, okay? Okay, let's throw this on, because pita bread, pita bread needs to be warmed through just a bit, because if you try to fold it, it's going to break and crack on you, and all your sandwich fillings are gonna come out. So I'm just gonna toss this up here for a minute, and then I'm gonna make you a traditional Zorro the Greek vinaigrette. It starts off with two egg yolks. This is actually more of a Zorro the Greek dressing than a vinaigrette because it contains egg yolks. We're going to add some mustard. Very good Greek mustard from Dijon. I can say that because I'm French, Greek, and Italian. And we're adding in some juice of a lemon, two tablespoons, and some dill, and some salt. Straight in, whisk it around. Cracker, come on over here. Are you guessing yet? No. Very good. Hold on to that, okay? Just hold on to the bowl for me. And we're just gonna emulsify this vinaigrette. This is the emulsification of Zorro the Greek. I'm gonna have this guy hold the bowl. There is our Greek dressing. Take a look at that. Hey, Cracker, stick your finger in there, try it. Not that one, that's the... Is that your shooting up finger? No. Okay. That's great, that's lemony. I'm gonna pour that all over our sandwiches. It's great, okay? So, the last thing we have to do is we have to do our flaming Greek, Zorro the Greek cheese sandwich. We have some Keflip cheese some kefla cheese. Uh, I think we had a drop out there. And I shall go over now to the Zorro the Greek pan. Get plenty of oil in there. And throw these right in. Hey, what do you want? You still do not know my true identity, do you? No. Okay, we're gonna let this cook up for a minute. That's looking good. You can turn it over and saute briefly. Our bread is looking good. Don't leave it on too long because it'll get crisp again and then for sure it's gonna break on you. Where is my lovely assistant? Women spend my half my life waiting. I have many Greek brothers who like to meet her. 
Melissa. Ah, my dear. I see you've made an appearance for Zoro the Greek. Is that a sword under your cape, or are you just happy to see me? It's my lighter. Oh, no, it's a big sword. Very, very big. Anyway, John, what are you cooking up for me today? I am not John, I am Zoro the Greek. Okay, Zoro, whatever fantasy you want to live out here. Watch as Zoro flames cheese. Oh. Opa! What does that mean? And now, we must make flaming cheese sandwich. Be very careful. Now, Zoro, beside the manliness of that fire, what's the point of setting it on fire? It's very manly. Flaming cheese. Let me taste your flaming cheese. My flaming cheese is the cheesiest of all the flaming cheeses. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, that is good. Do that again. <laughs> okay, now we, we must make souvlaki sandwich. Oh. Oh, Ooh, the skewers are charred. Would you maybe like some Zoro the Greek dressing? I like the sauce. Oh. Mm. Last time I saw sauce and meat like this, it was Humphrey Bogart's second wedding anniversary and I was playing... Oh, never mind. <laughs> My dear, you must try this. Mmm. You need a taste of your own creation. You know, my dear, being with you this fine day, eating this fine food, it makes my sword feel funny. <laughs> You're one sick, sick man. That's because it's red hot and ready, the home of smoky good Greeks. Where men are men and sheep are scared.